Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about making a decision on a candidate. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, would you agree with Joel, Joel Spolsky that you're not going to be able to make a decision on a software engineering candidate if you spend less than one hour on the interview? Nope. I have clocked the shortest amount of time I needed in order to figure out uh, the skill level of uh, a candidate because they tried to trick their way into in, through the interview and they failed the first question so br br brutally that uh, basically after that it was sort of just you know I don't like to do the thing that some people do which is that you know you figure out that you don't want this candidate or it's not a fit and then you sort of say tell them to their face like yeah this is not going to work out and then you sort of abort the entire interview what i like to do is a little bit more graceful because usually we book uh, the interviews like we have a code test and then uh, on like depending on which companies we're talking about but usually there's a code test and then there's the personal interview and so i usually uh, have a set of questions that we have things that we want to know from the personal interview and what i like to do is that for a candidate that is doing well we go through the whole usually it's an hour on average we go through the whole hour for a candidate that is doing really really poorly and I can immediately tell they up this person doesn't actually know how to code or something like that we skip so it's sort of like you go from having maybe 10 questions to having three questions uh, this is an extreme example of course but you sort of like and you keep it sort of high level like you just because the thing is if you make up your mind for it too too quickly, and that can happen, I've never it's never really happened to myself, but it can happen. So you always want to make sure that, all right, it, because you're touching on my touch on many different areas, and maybe they don't know one thing or one, another thing. It depends on what like their answer is, and it depends also it also depends on what the situation is, right? But you want to cover some ground because software development is a wide area. So an example would be if you ask a front end developer about CSS. Well, maybe they're not so strong. CSS but they might be strong in something else right so you'd want to have these select questions that you touch on which you have to go through that's my rule at the very least so you cover so that if something sounded really bad or the first few things sounded really bad they still have a chance to sort of catch up or like you to to redeem themselves in like I'm not telling them I know this of course but so I can have a chance to change my opinion if they get some other stuff correct but as I said I skip most of like might have I might have three or four or five questions on CSS for example but when I hear that they can't do the first two like the simples then simple stuff then there's no point in trying to force them into these because I have some coworkers who do that which I oh it gets so painful they can't I mean when you start asking a like a junior level software developer about the most technical details you can imagine like when they, you know they can't answer what the the basics usually in some cases like the the candidates who might or who, who are really new and this guy like yeah, I've worked with him a few times uh, it's like he still goes like really deep on stuff and I'm like it's sort of you know if they don't know what a fire is they're not going to know what thermal dynamics are necessarily as I, said, I hope that you sort of get my analogy here right uh, so when I hear that yeah these basic questions are a little bit too much for them I don't want to add more stress so I sort of go for go, you know, I don't go and pry into these details because it becomes so painful and I mean I've want, have had some candidates where we sort of had to just you know do some damage uh, control and sort of calm everybody down and so forth because they were getting so stressed that I uh, uh, some of them have been bordering on crying even from these basic things because they feel stupid and as I tell to tell my coworkers guys you the candidates are not usually bad people they're not trying to trick anybody or so, like especially the juniors it's not you know it's not like they're trying to pursue to uh, to fool you into getting a job or something like that they're here 
trying to get some get an employment and we're giving them a chance and now they're realizing that they have a lot you know they're not meeting oh, they, they're not doing so well they feel it in their entire being right and that is stressful to anybody so as the interviewer try to be nice but the idea that I need a full hour to do that or that there's some magic rule no absolutely not it can be really really quick the fastest way I've ever been able to figure out that someone wasn't uh, actually didn't know how to code was so we looked at their code test and I s t had seen a line where they were using a quirky little thing I hadn't really seen that in in this case it was a, um, a, rea a uh, JavaScript project they had done this thing which was kind of interesting because I had to go and look up the library that they were using to read up on it because I had never seen it before and so I read through it and I saw that well this thing here is really the same thing you could have done in this other way which is sort of you know the way that I would have done it or like that so I wanted to ask them so I asked them like curiously uh, could you explain a little bit like why did you make this decision and they kind of just uh, uh, no I really can't and I went but what does the library do? Because I had looked it up. Like I had actually taken their code and gone and looked at the packages and so forth. Uh, yeah, I can't really tell you that. And it turns out that they did not actually know what the code did. They had simply copy pasted like the the solution, and it turns out that at the end, like when we finally got into it, it turns out that they couldn't answer most of the code, which led me to sort of immediately understand that this person has not written this this person has taken this code from somewhere else because they can't even tell me what this the anything any of these files are doing that took less than if we count the small talk maybe 15 minutes something like that and after that as i said then we just kind of jumped uh yes to make a nice you know tie a bow on this thing and uh, then Let's just say that what usually is an hour's uh, interview uh, turned into about 25-30 minutes of uh, interviewing time. And then that was really it. So what I want you to take away from this is, is that no, you don't I don't know where this magical number comes from because magical numbers are bullshit usually uh, it the time it takes to do like a, an assessment of a person comes down to one part how well do you know what you're looking for how well do you know the industry how well do you know like the uh, how to how well uh, how strong are your soft skills etc etc and how like what type of person are you dealing with in some cases it might take a full hour to figure out how good a candidate is simply because they might be very difficult to get a communication going with like it can be hard to some people are very very conservative and very controlled in their body language and how they express themselves and that if you want to give them a fair shot as the interviewer it's really important that you understand that you can't judge them necessarily because they're not so elaborate in their descriptions of things you have to help them succeed if that makes sense without your course becoming biased or anything like that right but in some cases it's so fast that like it's like that you can immediately hear that this is not like a, a strong candidate for this specific role as i said i've had interviews where i i knew that this person was bad even like just a few minutes into the conversation and the, you can, I can tell you this much. When it comes to technical managers, engineering managers, that is really quick as well. I would even. This was an extreme case for like an engineer, but I've had many conversations with the so-called engineering managers with technical backgrounds. That is super easy. First question, they can basically not. You know, they start. Ooh, uh, 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 they don't know anything. You can't ask them anything technical. They don't even understand what you're saying. Uh, so it really depends. I would say and so this magical hour thing that might be for it sounds more like something a person is trying to sell you like their magical way of interviewing it sounds like a PR stunt that some some it's sort of like the 10 something or five ways of doing this thing it's something an arbitrary number some uh, person trying to sell you something made up have a great day